कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जय श्री कृष्णा चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाध शिव सदि घोर भक्त वृंद जय श्री कृष्णा चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाध शिव सदि घोर भक्त वृंद राधे गुरु भगवान की जय कृष्णा Yes, we begin with three and four. Ye paksar manir desham avyaktam parupasate sarvatra gamachintem cha uta sa machalandruam sanniyam yendriya dramam sarvatra samabodhaya. But those who fully worship the unmanifested, that which lies beyond the perception of the senses, the all-pervading, inconceivable, unchanging, fixed, and immovable, the impersonal conception of the absolute truth. by controlling the various senses and being equally disposed to everyone such persons engaged in the welfare of all at last achieve me okay. those okay those who do not directly worship the supreme god and krishna but who attempt to achieve the same goal by an indirect process are ultimate also ultimately achieve the same goal shri krishna after many births the man of wisdom seeks refuge in me knowing that vasudev is all when a person comes to full knowledge after many births he surrenders unto lord krishna If one approaches the Godhead by the method mentioned in this verse, he has to control the senses, render service for everyone, and engage in the welfare of all beings. It is inferred that one has to approach the Lord Krishna; otherwise, there is no perfect realization. Often, there is much penance involved before one fully surrenders unto Him. So, it is. in order to perceive the super soul within the individual soul one has to cease the sensual activities of seeing hearing tasting working etc then one comes to understand that the supreme soul is present everywhere realizing this one envies no living entity he sees no difference between man and animal because he sees soul only not the outer covering but for the common man this method of impersonal realization is very difficult any questions or comments or thoughts uh yeah i don't i don't think that this uh, purport is really saying what the passage says uh there are uh we just backed up by other commentaries uh it's it it it's this is a sectarian take on this first uh and bill indeed it is in one sense it's a bhakti it's a bhakti it's a bhakti take on it's this it's a bhakti take on an on an impersonalist approach yes and so it, it's it's uh, uh i th- i think we need to be cautious because the bhagavad gita incorporates all paths uh, it's a universal uh, text Uh, yeah, it is um, the text, but we're teaching bhakti here. We're teaching bhakti so, here. Yeah, so it's, so so Prabhupad, what Prabhupad wants to bhakti emphasize bhakti. is what he wants to emphasize is is that, and Krishna says this that this works, but because Prabhupad is presenting bhakti, 
he says that it works, bhakti works best. And he really, and I was going to, Bill, I was actually going to cite this here because uh, Prabhupada actually adds a, some editorialization, you might say, but it's to emphasize in the last line of the translation, he says, uh, such persons engaged in the welfare of all at last achieve me. Prabhupada adds a, at last there because what Prabhupada's trying to say here uh, is that in this age, uh, the process of other types of yoga are very, very difficult for persons living in the modern world. And therefore, if one tries to follow this indirect process, because bhakti is direct, bhakti just engages us directly in the, in, in the service of Krishna under the guidance of a guru like Prabhupada, but these other processes, they're indirect. And although they can, you will achieve a success eventually in this age for the persons reading these books, if they engage in those things, they're, it's sort of like in a baseball, in a football game, time's gonna run out before you can score. Uh, you're not gonna be able to get done because yeah. it's not possible. Yeah. I also, Bill, I also want to mention that the point you're making is um, is valid, but you have to see what Krishna is saying in the following verses, because that corroborates what he's saying in these two verses. In other words, what he's saying now, he's going to corroborate in the following verses. So hold on and see what the next verse is all about, okay? But that's a good point. Many people come to the Gita, they'll say it's good, many pass, and it does. But ultimately, bhakti is the direct path, and the other paths are much more difficult. And as we heard before, they might even lead us to an imperfect conclusion of impersonal realization, which is not as uh, safe or as satisfying as the relationship with the Supreme Lord. But that's a great point, good way to start off. Um, anybody else have any other questions or comments? It's like bhakti is an elevator and, and uh, other process, other yogas are like taking the steps. <clears throat> that's Prabhupada's famous example. Why take the steps when you can have the elevator? You know, it's, it's an interesting point because in many places in the Gita, um, Krishna throws out these ideas to Arjuna and Arjuna, like in the sixth chapter, he says, you know, this yoga, it's just not for me. I can't do it. It's too uh, difficult. And then Krishna over and over again says, simply hear about me, understand me, follow my instructions and worship me. And if by that surrender to me, you'll, um, you'll, you'll come to me. Yes. Oh, and that's a good point that uh, Gajendra is putting down here at the bottom here. Sees no difference. Um, Vidyavanaya sampane brahmani gavi hastini suni chaiva sapake cha pandita samadarshana. I can't remember what it is. I think it's fifth chapter, 22nd verse. Can't remember. Um, that the learned and gentle sage sees with equal vision um, the elephant, the dog, the dog, uh, the dog, the brahmana. the brahmana, and the outcast. So, um, you know, the, the person who is on a platform of complete understanding, realizing um, Krishna, he sees no difference between man and animal because he sees a soul only and not the outer covering. One of Prabhupada's most important instructions. A very quick note. Next verse. It just says, it is inferred that one has to approach Lord Krishna, otherwise there is no perfect realization. But Krishna is in all things, it's a universal thing. And so uh, it's, anyway, that, that, that sort of sums up my problem with this purport, is that he's, he's saying that something is inferred because that's his idea of realization is, is strictly in one thing, is a relationship with Lord. Yeah, you know, Bill. You know, one time Prabhupada had a had a conversation with um with um 
a Hindu pro a professor of South Asian religions. And, uh, and the professor said, when I read your translations, I see Krishna everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. And Prabhupada said, yes, that's the point. <laughs> so, you know, Prabhupada is giving us Krishna. And, you know, the, the, if, you, if, we have been, if we were studying um, a Gita given by some other person in another path, there would be a different emphasis. But Prabhupada is teaching us Krishna Bhakti. And Krishna himself, ultimately, as we'll see in the next verse, emphasizes the fact that Krishna Bhakti is going to be the best path. So we go to the next verse. Next verse got a very long purport. For those whose minds are attached to the unmanifested, impersonal feature of the Supreme, advancement is very troublesome. To make progress in that discipline is always difficult for those who are embodied. Finish, Prima? This is it. Um, the, the group of transcendentalists oh. Nan Yogis and the and person who are in full Krishna consciousness engaged in devotional services to the Lord are called Bhakti Yogis. Now, here, the difference between Agnan Yoga and Bhakti Yoga is definitely expressed. The process of Gnan Yoga, although uh, ultimately bring one to the same goal, is very troublesome. Whereas the path of Bhakti Yoga, the process of being in the, in the, the, the direct service of the Supreme Personality of God is easier and is natural for the embodied soul. The individual soul is embodied since time immemorial. It is very difficult for him to supply theoretically, understand that he is not the body. Therefore, the Bhakti Yogi accepts the deity of Krishna as worshipable because there is some bodily conception fixed in the mind which can thus be applied. Of course, worship of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his form within the temple is not idol worship. There is evidence in the Vedic literature that worship may be sagun or nirgun of the Supreme possessing or not possessing attributes. Worship of the deity in the temple is sagun worship and the Lord is represented by material qualities. But the form of the Lord, though represented by material qualities as such as stone, wood, or oil paint, is not actually material. That is the absolute nature of the Supreme Lord. A crude example may be given here. We may find some mailboxes on the street, and if we post our letters in those boxes, they will naturally go to their destination without difficulty. But any old box or an imitation which may find somewhere, but which is not authorized by the post office will not do the work. Similarly, God has authorized representation in the deity form, which is called arch. Arch Vigraha. Arch Vigraha. Arch Vigraha. Yes, that's correct. This Arch Vigraha is an incarnation of the Supreme Lord. God will accept service through that form. The Lord is omnipotent, all powerful. Therefore, by his incarnation as Arch Vigraha, he can accept the services of the devotee just to make it convenient for the man in conditioned life. So for a devotee, there is no difficulty in approaching the Supreme immediately and directly. But for those who are following the impersonal way to spiritual realization, the path is difficult. 
they have to understand the unmanifested representation of the Supreme through such Vedic literatures, such as Upanishads, and they have to learn the language, understand the non-perceptual feelings, and realize all these processes. Pray Krishna. Pray Krishna. Shri Maharaj. This is not very easy for a common man. A person in Krishna consciousness engaged in devotional service simply by guidance of the bona fide spiritual master, sim simply by offering regulative obeisances unto the deity, simply by hearing the glories of the Lord, and simply by eating the remnants of foodstuffs offered to the Lord, realizes the Supreme Personality of Godhead very easily. This is... The there is no doubt that the impersonalists are unnecessarily taking a troublesome path with the risk of not realizing the absolute truth at the ultimate end. But the personalist without any risk, trouble or difficulty approaches the Supreme Personality directly. May, may I Um, Bill? Bill? Oh, oh, oh yes. Um, a similar passage appears in Srimad Bhagavatam. It's stated that if one ultimately has to surrender under the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the surrendering process is called bhakti, but instead takes the trouble to understand what is Brahman and what is not Brahman and spends his whole life in that way, the result is simply troublesome. Therefore, it's advised here that one should not take up this troublesome path of self-realization because there is uncertainty in the ultimate result. A living entity is eternally an individual soul. And if he wants to merge into the spiritual whole, he may accomplish the realization of the eternal and knowledgeable aspects of his original nature. But the blissful portion is not realized. By the grace of some devotee, such as a transcendentalist, highly learned in the process of Gyan Yoga, may come to the point of Bhakti Yoga or devotional service. At that time, long practice in impersonalism also becomes a source of trouble because he cannot give up the idea. Therefore, an embodied soul is always in difficulty with the unmanifest, both at the time of practice and at the time of realization. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Every living soul is partially independent and one should know for certain that this unmanifested realization is against the nature of his spiritual blissful self. One should not take up this process. For every individual living entity, the process of Krishna consciousness, which entails full engagement in devotional service, is the best way. If one wants to ignore this devotional service, there is the danger of turning to atheism. Thus, the process of centering attention on the unmanifested, the inconceivable, which is beyond the approach of the senses, as already expressed in this verse, should never be encouraged at any time, especially in this age, it's not advised by Lord Krishna. So this uh, is a, an amazing purport to this verse. And um, if we can go back to the first paragraph, We'll, just do, read the verse. we'll read the verse again. Yeah. For those whose minds are attached to the unmanifested impersonal feature of the supreme advancement is very troublesome. To make progress in that discipline is always difficult for those who are embodied. And in fact, if you see it in, in, the, in the word for word, it talks about this. Um, avyakta hi gatir dukam. <coughs> avyakta, toward the unmanifested, he certainly progress gati do come anytime difficult. difficult you know it's not sukham sukham would be happy but this is dukham um and krishna consciousness is called susukham the most sweet so 
you know, this is something very important. In a, in a book by Bhaktivinoda Thakur called the G, uh, Jiva Dharma, uh, there's a, a, a character there. He is an impersonalist. Uh, and he, um, he is very advanced in all the austerities and all this, the scriptures. But it, he doesn't have any bliss. It's very dry. And, and when he meets the devotees, because he's a very pious man and very advanced in practice, he immediately uh, sees the bliss that's in devotion to Krishna, and he becomes a very advanced Vaishnava. So the point is, is that these other processes, they do not provide, it, it, they, you can get the sat and the chit, the eternity and the, no, and the knowledge, um, but that ananda is not present. And that's a very big, big problem. So, because we, the because we are by definition Satchitananda, uh, and Krishna is a Satchitananda Vigraha, the embodiment of eternity, knowledge, and bliss. So, can, let's look at the first paragraph. And if there's anybody there, anything, anybody would like to ask about the first paragraph? First two paragraphs talk about process in our Krishna consciousness called deity worship. Archa yeah, the Archa Vigra. The Archa Vigraha is the, is the name of, the, that's what the deity is called, the incarnation. And Prabhupada makes this point that um, Krishna can be worshipped in saguna, that is with form, or near guna, without form. But worship of the deity in the temple is saguna worship. And Krishna, he agrees to be represented through what appears to be material elements like stone, wood, or paint, um, because we have material eyeballs and material ears, and we cannot uh, perceive spiritual form, but Krishna can inhabit what appears to be material form so that we can actually have some connection with him on a tangible, sensual level. I, uh, I visited a, a Swaminarayan temple some years ago, which was very interesting. And I sort of got a tour there. And a uh, person gave me a tour, uh, brought me up to their, their murdies. And, uh, uh, and he turned to me and he says, we, we believe that these murdies are alive. We have, we have installed these deities and, and they, they, are, you know, they are our objects of worship. And he looked at me like saying, thinking, you know, that's going to weird this Westerner out. I said, well, okay. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't bother about that. But that is probably this, one of the, the things that in the West is the hardest yes. aspect. Not so, much, not so much for the Roman Catholics. Because in the Roman Catholic Church, there are all kinds of images. And people worship them and venerate those, those images, you know? There's a little for, bit. The, for the Christians in general, except the Roman Catholics, it's very difficult. The Muslims, they, there's not absolutely no conception of any form. It's because uh, when you install the deities, you know, that's when you are doing this whole pran pratishta job, right? So you are putting in, right. you are putting in the pran, the soul, uh, right. in the deities, and that's why, uh, you know, it's failed that they are alive, right? And that's well, we are we are actually putting the prawn in. We're saying asking Krishna to put his prawn in. Yes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but our, our prayer, yeah, yeah, our prayers call him. Yeah. Um, and what Prophet has is a wonderful example here that he used so many times about the post office box. You know that the postal service. Um, well, you know, to make it even more direct, the post office is the is the spiritual world of the uh, of the postal service it's the it's the vaikunta uh it is uh it is the place where if you go there your letters reach home uh whatever that means you know go to wherever they're supposed, supposed to go but the postal service then puts letter boxes mailboxes out into the world like krishna puts out his archa vigrahas into the world as as authorized places where one can, you know, mail the letter. But if one 
concocts, uh, you know, the uh, uh, said, well, you know, if the post office has uh, this post office boxes is, is two blocks away, I think I'll put one, I'll paint it the same and put it in my backyard. None of the letters will ever be picked up in that let letter box in the backyard because that's a concocted, mm -hmm. let, uh, unauthorized. So, you know, a lot of times the Christians or the, the Jews and the people who read the Bible, they go back to um, the story of the Israelites wandering in the desert. And when Moses was on the mountain getting the Ten Commandments, his brother uh, was uh, leading uh, a group of, uh, of uh, the followers, actually it was just about everybody. Uh, they melted down gold and they cast an, a golden calf as, as uh, their yeah. idol. Well, you know, there's, God did not say that uh, he appeared as a golden calf to anybody. Um, and therefore, that's an incorrect uh, activity. And then when Moses came down, he became so angry, he you know, smashed the, uh, the, the Ten Commandments to the ground, and he was very disturbed. And then he, they were, anyway, they were cursed to wander longer in the, de in the desert because of that. But the point being is that these unauthorized attempts, imaginative attempts of who God is, that's not what the deities are. These are authorized and they're described in the Shastra. Prabhuji, yeah. so one point. Mm. I think the fact that us bodied, embodied souls are attracted to personal form, that is validated by several natural examples where we see the, the form that is there is attracted to its own form, like rivers like to merge into oceans. The fire rises towards the sun. And then even if you look in the Morrisville area, all of the Indians have come together in Morrisville because they are attracted to their own kind. So the fact that us embodied people would like to worship the personal form of Krishna that is quite natural. And that mm -hmm. phenomenon is expressed in several other ways in our daily lives, whereby we are naturally attracted to our own kind. And in this case, the bodily form is naturally attracted to the bodily form of God in Krishna. Mm -hmm. Very good point. That's a very good point. Very good point. And when Krishna appears in Braj, he appears in, in what we call, it's called Naravat Lila. It's a, hu, most human-like. Human uh, so much so that the inhabitants of Braja, they, they really can't get their head around the idea that Krishna is God. And in fact, they can't understand that. Occasionally it breaks through, oh, he must be God, but it gets covered over again. He's their boy. He's their, their um, um, lover. Mm. He's their friend. Uh, you know, he's just mm. a wonderful person. And that's so that's higher that's a higher understanding or a higher relationship with god than being in the vaikunta with narayan narayan what we could say the sv temple you see the you know um Venkateshwara, he's definitely god because he's huge mm -hmm. and, and 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 no one's like that uh and, and and he's you know he's so powerful he can't even look at you he's got to have his eyes blocked and so that's you know huge, opulent, powerful, mighty God. And you can have only a certain kind of relationship, bowing down before him, begging for, for his favor, serving him in a sort of like official way. But the residents of Vrindavan, they just love him. You know, right now we are reading in the 10th canto of the Bharatam in the temple, chapter 28, which is about how Varuna uh, uh, abducts Nanda Maharaj, takes him to his uh, to his place underneath the water in, uh, in the Amuna River, in a very uh, opulent uh, <laughs> kingdom. And, uh, and how Krishna goes to rescue his father. And so the men are just wondering what's going on. They're starting to realize that maybe Krishna is the Supreme Lord. And so they're going to ask him, these are chapters coming, I mean, verses coming up, they're going to ask him, can we please see the Vakunta planets? Can we see the impersonal form? And they realize that after they have those experiences, but Krishna makes those things available to them to see and experience, that they don't want it. They don't want Vakunta. They don't want the impersonal form. 
because what they want is that very, very intimate loving relationship with him. <coughs> and that is not present either in the Vaikuntha planets at the level that they experience and absolutely absent in the impersonal realization. Mm -hmm. So that's another element, you know, another story that exemplifies very clearly all these things that we're discussing. Yeah, and in, in fact, in, yeah, so in Srimad Bhagavatam, right, so we are reading Canto 3 right now, and it comes up again and again that God has a personal form. So like even Sanat Kumars, right, who were like totally in the impersonal Brahma, and they were the highest Brahma Gyan, and when they they couldn't look, you know, they go there to see the, the Sakar form, the real personal form of Lord Vishnu. And once they see, and they realize, you know, they get totally converted into the bhakti uh, devotional aspect. Uh, so I think it's mentioned again and again that God it's, himself is, is not impersonal. Like there is a form, spiritual transcendental form. And, and because of that, because of that, if you look at the third paragraph, it says starting with, so for the devotee, Prabhupada makes the point in the third paragraph, for the devotee, there's no difficulty. Uh, approaching the supreme immediately, immediately. immediately. and and that immediately and directly is an interesting point because what that means is is if we meet uh, a, a person uh, who's a pure devotee that person can immediately guide us in a way in which we can do what it's these things like um, guide under the guidance of the spiritual master we can make an offering we can probably pay our basinses we can hear about the Lord. We can take prasadam. Immediately, and immediately, we can chant the holy name. Immediately, we come in contact with that spiritual energy from Krishna. And, and that's how we immediately approach. It's not pay, hazy. It's like Bill speaking about that about the, the, uh, the um, Zen Buddhists uh, staring you know, at a wall while meditating. And I also had some experience with Buddhism before I, I, I joined the movement. Uh, it, you know, it's it, what you're worshiping. You can't really put your finger on it because you can't. You don't know what it is. It's what do we call ineffable. It's uh, um, formless, indescribable. tasteless, indescribable. Um, but we can describe Krishna, and it's described to us. So how natural that that process is. The difference is that, like in Buddhism, for example, people are just trying to figure out what's go go going on with their eyes closed. Bhakti's eyes full open because immediately we can experience, we can see, we can offer prayers, we can worship, we can do so many things directly to the source of everything and everybody, which is the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. Immediately, directly. I uh, so we I've, I've noticed that, that as I grow older, <laughs> well, my tendency is more and more to bhakti yoga that, that, yeah, because my mind is soft i don't i don't have, have all these facilities anymore for the very young and the very old you know it, you, you got to do what you can do and then this and this is really the you know the most comforting the most uh the most harmonious uh uh past so for all the all the fuss i i kick up i mean I, this, this is who i'm at <laughs> well you know Bhakti is totally egalitarian. In other words, you can be a great scholar and bhakti is wonderful. And you can be a little kid and you don't know much and bhakti is wonderful. And you can be an average person who's not a scholar and bhakti is wonderful. It's for everybody. It's not that you have to be super austere or super smart or have this kind of, uh, you know, uh, ability to, uh, to, to, you know, speculate or meditate on some sort of, you know, in a ro ring of fire or some other, right. it's natural. We can all do it at whenever, wherever we are. It, it's a hoitiki apertiata. It, it's uninterrupted, it's unmotivated and uninterrupted. It's, uh, it, it has no, there's no block. We can just simply do it at whatever stage we're in. And there is no motivation either because the only reason that we're performing bhakti is because we're trying to evolve who we really are in relationship with the Supreme Lord. And that's like the word natural has come up several times. Like uh, my, my husband just mentioned natural, 
And also for Oprah, we also mentioned natural and it feels natural and it's natural. And so it's easy to adopt this method. It's just that we may have very little faith, but if we have a little bit of faith, we'll realize that that's the way to do it. That's, that's easy and natural and pleasant. And uh, it feels just right. It's like we're discovering who we are and we're doing that which defines who we are. Let me ask a question. I'll, I'll bring something up here. Both Srila Prabhupada and Bhakti Vinod Thakur made the point that actually a Christian is better situated um, transcendentally than an impersonalist, Mayavadi. Um, why would that be so? Why is a Christian? I mean, according to Bhakti Vinod Thakur especially, Christianity is much preferred over um, over any kind of Indian, you know, uh, 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 impersonalism. So, Prabhuji, one thing that uh, I'm thinking about as we are discussing is that a point you made a few minutes earlier for the Sachidanand, right? So, the Anand part of it, which is the bliss side of it, right? Yes. Um, and what I'm, you know, getting in this is that between the two forms of, uh, you know, uh, processes, it seems that the bhakti yoga has bliss that is missing in other areas. So um, one thing that I can think is that between Christians and the Mayavadis, it's probably that factor that counts into it, where you have some blissfulness in the Krishnandi, while in Mayavadis, you may not have that. And that may be one of the reasons why um, that comment was made. But that's true. The Christians may have this, you know, they do kirtan of their own type and they glorify God. And, you know, if you read in the Bible, many places it says, oh, Jesus says, you know, our father out in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I mean, he's talking about, we, you know, chant the, the, chant the name of God. Um, yes, that's a good point. Probably, I, I would. The baby yeah, days is related to this are, are between neighbors. <laughs> well, there is a deeper philosophical point. Even though that's true too, feuds are between neighbors. But Parag, with the, uh, I was going to say the fact that Christians may be better positioned than the impersonalists is related to this verse because they are worshiping a personal form of yes. uh, supreme. Uh, I mean, of uh, guru, if you will, like in Jesus, yes. with the uh, cross and with uh, the image of Jesus statue of Jesus on that. So in that sense, they are aligned more towards the personal form of worship, which will lead to more attachment and better purification. Absolutely. Their... That's Absolutely. The that's, that's really the that's answer. The answer yes. I'll guarantee you, you go into any church, anywhere, any Christian church and say, I am God. They're going to say, what are you talking about? <laughs> because God is God. Now, they don't know who he is, really. He's unknown. He's sort of like behind the curtain. But the idea that you or me can become God to a Christian, it's just a completely, uh, uh, it's apostasy. I mean, it's like, it's, it's, it's totally wrong. And also the Christian faith, the Jesus, who is the one who is uh, at the front of everything, all the doctrine, is always talking about, I have to perform the will of my father. I am subordinate to the Father. So when we talk to Christians and we explain that Krishna is the Father, so they are not aware of who he is. They know there is a Father. They know that he's the one running the whole show, that, Christ, that Jesus is his son and subordinate and servant. But that's the way they do it. It's a personal form. And so we explain, who is the father? The father is Krishna. Anyway, I think we've come to five of eight. <laughs> that was a good discussion. Good discussion. Very good discussion. One last point. I'm reminded of two kids in Little League arguing with each other about which team they want to play with in the major leagues. Yeah. Once we get to that level, We'll have a very clear perspective about what's going on, yeah. much better than we do now. 
Absolutely. At the highest levels, the persons at the highest levels of their faith traditions have more in common with each other than they do with the people at the lower levels of their own faith tradition. And so you can get the high levels of high level Christian monks with sannyasis yes, and with yes. Buddhists and mystics, and they have a lot more in common with each other across the faith lines than they may with the people below who are just following in a very uh, mechanical sort of way. But we love Krishna because Prabhupada has given us Krishna, <laughs> and therefore that is our life. <clears throat> Radha Krishna. Yeah. yeah, I think there's a lot in common till they get to the form part of it, but everything else comes together. Yeah. yeah, they don't have an idea of what the form is, and that's where we have such a great gift for the whole world by teaching people that yes, God is real, He is a person, and here He here He is. Here's this picture. Okay. <clears throat> Sometimes, sometimes the Christians depict God as a very old man with a white beard who is kind of semi-crippled. And they don't realize that the Supreme Lord is a young man, absolutely wonderful and beautiful, full of energy and power and sweetness and uh, the source of our, of our existence. They have no idea. They just, at best, that old man with a beard, maybe with uh, some loose teeth and uh, arthritis, you know? <laughs> All right. This week has been uh, Srila Prabhupada's appearance, 125th appearance, right? Yes. So, uh, we are going to see very quick one minute of, you know, Prime Minister Modi inaugurating that coin of yes. the 125th anniversary. We'll see that for a minute, and then we'll see for 10 minutes uh, Swami Prabhupada's Australia tune, where he himself is speaking, and I think some of the answers, like what we have been discussing, maybe we'll find nice. some of the answers there. So, Thank you, Prabhupada. Wonderful, nice. wonderful. So let's do the inauguration first. धन्यवाद आदरणीय गोस्वामी महाराज जी और मैं माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी से विनयपूर्ण आग्रह करती हूं कि कृपया रिमोट का बटन दबाकर भक्ति विदान स्वामी प्रभुपाद की 125वीं जयंती के अवसर पर 125 रुपए का स्मारक सिक्का जारी करें प्रधानमंत्री जी और तब मैं आदरणीय प्रधानमंत्री जी से विनम्रता पूर्वक करबद्ध आग्रह करती हूं कि कृपया अपने प्रेरणादायक शब्दों द्वारा हमारा मार्गदर्शन करें हरे कृष्णा आज के इस पुण्य अवसर पर हमारे साथ जुड़ रहे सो दैट वाज द इनोग्रेशन And now we are going to see the Australia tour. And so we'll see it exactly for 10 minutes. Yeah.
hallowed be thy name. My Lord, Krishna, the personality of God, let your holy name be glorified. This is our moment. It is not a sectarian, it is a very scientific moment. Scientific moment because at the present moment we are all godless, forgotten what is God and what to speak of His name. They do not believe in God and what to speak of His name, fame, His place, His activities, His form, His quality. How we can know? There is no educational system uh, about the science of God. This movement, Krishna Consciousness movement, is teaching the science of God. God is absolute. Absolute means there is no difference. Uh, just like in the relative world, this is relative world. Material world means relative world. Relative world means the sun. As soon as I say the sun, there must be a father. As soon as I say a friend, there must be another man, friend. As soon as I say water, there must be something as water. <coughs> but in the absolute world, the name water and the water is the same. Uh, this is called absolute. Uh, no different separation. So in the kingdom of God, the God is God and His Son is also God. So, by chanting Hare Krishna, you are directly in contact with God. This is the meaning of Hare Krishna. We think we are enjoying, but we are suffering, actually. And because we cannot understand uh, what is suffering, suffering there is, uh, sometimes we come to understand, but we are accepting this suffering as enjoying. A man is working very hard, uh, very hard, whole day. Uh, he is the, this is not enjoyment. Uh, you have got a car, but you are running at 70 miles speed, going to your uh, business, and there you are earning hundreds and thousands of dollars. So you are thinking that you are enjoying, but this labor is suffering, you forget. And in order to forget this suffering, then I take to wine, take to this, take to that, to forget this suffering. So actually we are suffering, but we are accepting it as enjoying. This is called illusion. Anyone who is very much sensuous, very much attached to sense gratification, they are called demo. And those persons who do not indulge in sense gratification, but utilize this body or this life for uh, God-realization, Krishna-realization, they are called gods. There are two classes of men, demon and god. Those who are engaged in God-consciousness, they are not god but godly. And those who are not, because this human life is meant for this purpose, uh, forgetting our Father, forgetting our God, God, we are uh, criminal within this material world. Therefore, our only business is how to get out of this prison house and go back to home, back to God. God is like you and me, a person, but He is pacific ocean, we are dropped. Yes. Because in Bhagavatam, which is a scripture that we study, it says that Krishna did not want us to come to this material world. The question is, if Krishna did not want us to come, why are we here? Yes, He forced Krishna to allow you to come. Just like sometimes a child 
forces the father. Father says, my dear son, do not do this, do not go. But he insists, well, I must go, I must. All right, you go at your risk. That's all. And you suffer. What can be done? Because you are God, because you are son of God, uh, God has got independence, full independence, almighty. Therefore, you have acquired the quality of your father. You have got little independence. So God does not interfere with your little independence. Beginning from Lord Brahma down to the wands in the stool, gradually, according to your work, according to your desire, you manufacture your different types of body and enjoy and suffer. That's all. India means senses. We cannot understand what is Krishna or God, His name, His form, His attributes, His pastimes. We cannot understand by these blunt material senses. Then how it is to be understood? After all, this human life is meant for understanding God. That is the only business of human life. The nature, material nature, gives us this opportunity to uh, have this human form of life, the uh, facility of this life, or this form of life is given to us just to understand God. Other forms of life, cats and dogs, trees, and so many other things, there are eight million four hundred thousand forms of life. So in other forms of life it is not possible to understand what is God. Uh, if we call all the dogs of the your country, eh? come here, we shall talk about God. No, no, there is no possibility of understanding. But in the human form of life, there is possibility. Doesn't matter whether it is in India or America or Australia, any human being, uh, if he tries and if he uh, reads the scriptures, never mind, Bible, Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad, then he will understand God. Wow, that was really nice, Kijandra. So this is direct. So this was uh, recorded uh, like during his trip to Australia. So that was really nice to see. It's oh, half an hour, uh, it's a half an hour session actually. If you want, I'll send the link. Send the link, yeah. That's really uh, nice. Yeah. It's 1974, I think so. There are a lot of a lot of good questions afterwards as well. Yeah. Yeah. He was speaking to a bunch of uh, of Christian uh, monks in the in that last cut there.
Right, right, right. Actually, I also hear yeah, there are some questions asked about that too. Yeah. And we get pretty good answers. Yeah. I so like, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it will be nice to see this, uh, you know, for one yeah. period. Years of yeah. Send us the link. Send everybody the yes, link. Everybody yes. will be so happy. That'll be great. <laughs> so, uh, hope everybody has a nice Labor Day weekend. There's a uh, um, if you get if you're on the Temple uh, WhatsApp, there is a picnic tomorrow. at Falls Lake tomorrow at 4:30, 4:30 to 7:30, um, and. I can actually forward it to uh, to, to the uh, Radha Govind link also, and uh, it, I think everybody's invited, so you're welcome to come. Bir Krishna Maharaj will be there playing his guitar. Bir Krishna Maharaj will be there between five and six. Five and six. Yeah. Okay. 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 Hare Krishna. Hare. Long weekend, everybody. Hare. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your weekend. And thank you for your association. Nice, nice to get together. Thank you. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Krishna.